Bring us in, babe. Welcome to Coco Caliente. Welcome to another edition of this wonderful podcast here to soothe your ears. So I'm finally 29. The party happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess it wasn't a party per se. Let's say game night with your parents uh, and your brother. Yeah. yeah. Game nights with your parent and your brother. So, which is fine because we're all basically quarantined together as it is. So, yeah, we see each other um, every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was nice to, I guess, have a theme for the day that we were hanging out. Mm-hmm. So, it was cops and robbers. Pretty much everybody dressed up like uh, robbers. Except for my dad. Who wore leather pants, which was <laughs> hilarious, and a blonde, wig. long hair wig. Um, so that was fun. So I, I'm 29 now. I'm looking forward to getting Nicole's present in the mail. She got me a gold bracelet. And for people that be like, oh, that's kind of weird. That <laughs> you, hey, that could have been the weirder normal. Yeah, that you wanted a gold bracelet. And it's like, well, no. In Puerto Rico, we're pretty much born with gold necklaces, which I still have now, a mm-hmm. gold necklace, and gold bracelets. Mm-hmm. But over the course of my lifespan, I have had and I have lost like three or four gold bracelets. Which is kind of How sad. come you like they? Do you think they break off your wrist without you knowing? So n- unlike the necklace, the bracelet sometimes I actually have to take off for certain things, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. a finger can get caught in there, or some activity that I'm doing may cause it to rip. Especially when I was playing soccer a lot, I didn't like to leave my bracelet on, obviously, because somebody you know tussling mm-hmm. with you for the ball or whatever right. can easily rip it off. Sometimes I would like tape it to my wrist, like put white tape over it. But a lot of times it was just easier to take it off. Right. Same with like uh, sports in college and stuff. So because of that, I lost a lot of bracelets. And one was especially sad because my grandma gave me Aww. a bracelet. Yeah. But good thing she's still alive. So I'm going to just have her buy me another one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> just buy me another gold bracelet, grandma. Here's the money. Just I want it from you. Yeah, I just want you to buy it from me. I'll send you the money. You just find one. Uh, so no, I'm excited for Nicole to get that. You've wanted one moment. for a while and I've just been kind of like... Okay, you know, because it's hard. I did try to get him one before, and this was during Christmas a couple years ago when you're just online shopping, and this says it was used to be like $2,000, and it's on sale for $500. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a steal. And I get it in the mail, and... It looked like it come from a twenty five cent machine. Yeah, it it looked almost plastic. Like it looked, I was, it was so like very disappointed chintzy. because I mean, how am I supposed to know? It says it was. I'm a very bad sucker for. Oh, it was two thousand. <laughs> now it's five hundred. I fully believe that, and still, like five hundred bucks to me is a lot of money. So I'm like, okay, this has got to be good. <laughs> and, uh, Didn't it come in like a Ziploc bag too? Yeah, it was. It was from like <laughs> Macy's or J.C. Penney or something like that. So I wasn't. That's it wasn't hilarious. just like some random. I guess don't get gold at like a department store, maybe. Yeah, or or, or maybe or try see to it see it in person because yeah. when you lifted it up, it literally felt like it weighed nothing. <laughs> and, and it's funny though. So be- this time I went through Sarah O Jewelry, who I know is bomb and <laughs> legit. They're the ones that made my engagement ring. Because I am, because you can't go anywhere and look in stores right mm-hmm. now. So they're the only people I trust. Um, so she, it's like they cut. They're custom <laughs> making yeah, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. I'm gonna have a custom made gold bracelet by Nicole. I really can't lose this one, so I really have to be careful. Also, new in the agenda, I finally hunkered down and paid, and I'm starting to take pilot classes. I've been telling Nicole for the longest time. That I want to get my private pilots was a private personal private private pilot's <laughs> license. Yep, PPL, and I've been talking about it for years, uh, and now I finally pulled the trigger. And the last thing I learned about was the first day that I actually took any classes online it was uh, just like two days ago. Yeah, and it was aerodynamics. So on my days off, I'm going to try to dedicate an hour and a half, maybe uh, yeah, two hours, an hour and a half to two hours to it until I complete it, and then start that. So that's exciting. That is exciting. You know what? Maybe I should study Spanish for those two hours. Yeah, that'd be perfect. You know, it's all about improvement. It's all about trying to just starting. Yes. Just like 
once you start, you get a little bit invested, but it's the hardest thing to do is start. And I know how you get excited because you can get a notebook and you can write Spanish class on it I, and you can get more pens and all that. And you love preparing for that stuff. I do. And then I don't do it. I get it all in the mail and I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm over that. And that was so, I'm done. That was two days ago. That was exciting to set up for <laughs> and it's over. Just like right now, I'm like on the internet looking at all this skincare that's so expensive and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to be real really serious about my skincare and then when it comes in i'll be like eh, i'm over it so i'm really thinking about if i should invest in something like this yeah no i i, I trust me it took me years because i've been talking about it for a long time and mm-hmm. i'm just finding like you know what just go for it but uh just like when i bought audible like this audible spanish book. Yeah. okay so i did <laughs> want to surprise victor and learn spanish and i have been telling people this for a while behind his back and I thought, okay, he's just, I think he just started working mm-hmm. and I was like, I was okay. at the academy. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to start, I have all this time on my hands. He's not here. I'm going to start learning Spanish. And so I looked up online where to learn it. And then they say just like hearing it helps. So in the background, I went on audible and I bought like the membership and I bought the Spanish learning package. And next thing you know, like two seconds later, I get a text message from Victor being like, oh, isn't this the cutest thing ever? And I put it under my name, but because his Amazon account is in his name, Audible's with Amazon, he got a notification that I, <laughs> so I gave up right then. I threw like basically threw it and I said, okay, I'm unsubscribing because it was, was no fun to know for him to know that I was trying to She's learn like, Spanish. She's like the pressure now that yeah. I know that you know that I'm learning Spanish is too much. I don't, like it, so I I don't like it. I don't like it. I thrive on that though. That's why like, you know, I'd, I should have like rather pressure. not tell people, oh. but you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I told people and I'm going to do it and I have to do it. If not, yeah, I like I'm, to just surprise people. Like one day I just wanted to like say a Spanish word, like fluent sentence and you just be like, oh. and then maybe be able to have a conversation. But now I see how difficult it is and... I think you could help me in the process probably more than absolutely, an online book especially if or we're something. learning to doing stuff together at that same time. You'd mm-hmm. be like, "Hey, how do you pronounce this, or how do you say this, or what does this mean?" Um, <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> changing gears. Our guest today is Casey Clark. She is the Big Brother Twenty champion, and she is also currently on the Challenge Season Thirty Five mm-hmm. that's airing right now. Yeah, so we hope you guys enjoy. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hey, Casey, what's up? Hello, hello. What's up? Okay, Coco Caliente in the house. <laughs> welcome, welcome, and welcome. Thank you for what's joining up, us. Guys? We're oh, excited. No. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Anytime. Well, welcome to this roller coaster that is the Coco Caliente podcast. <laughs> I hope you uh, enjoy your time with us. How, how are you uh, faring out right now with uh, COVID-19? Oh, man. I feel like I'm back at home. You know, I'm sure you guys feel the same. Look, we're quarantined all over again. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, so it's 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 good. I mean, just staying in and I mean, it's different. Where's, but, home, where's, uh, where's home for you? I'm in San Diego. San Diego. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm in San Diego. So it, it's nice over here. It was raining a lot. It just stopped raining. So. And it's snowing over here right now. So. Yes. Snowing? <laughs> yes. It's ridiculous. Where are you guys at? Michigan. It's ridiculous. Michigan. It shouldn't be, oh, it so shouldn't be snowing right no, now. No, it shouldn't. Wow. So you guys, you guys don't go outside at all, like to walk or anything? <laughs> well, we could like last week we could go on walks, but now it's absolutely not. There's like 50 mile an hour winds and it's snowing. So it's oh just my goodness. definitely been staying inside the house, which makes it a lot harder because if I could just get some fresh air or, you know, go out in the backyard and play some yard games, that helps a lot. Right. Wow, man. I'm so sorry. I don't know how you guys do it in the snow. I always say like, I don't know how people live in snow. It's like torture. <laughs> and, and honestly, it really, it's like cool. And it looks nice for like about 20 right. minutes, like when it's heavy snowing, but once all the cars get through it and it's all slushy and it's, uh, it's just nasty. Um, yeah. No, nope, not but, for me. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so let's go back. So you are season 20 of Big Brother winner, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes, you're sir. currently on the challenge. What uh, season are they on? It's season 35. So the challenge, season 35. So let's go back to before any of this started. Before you were normal Casey playing football, right? Hey, 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 I'm so normal. So, normal. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, just take us back. What were you doing before all this? Uh, you did all the reality TV stuff. How, how did yes. this start? Yes. Yeah, so um, 
before I was, okay, I worked at a grocery store for 11 years. I was doing that part time. And just cause I wanted like the, you know, the, the freedom to be able to do whatever I wanted. I started, I was, I started a business when I was 25. And so I was doing that part time and I was just, yeah, bu- building this business. And then I ended up quitting. Like I was on a roll with do- going change back to back change. So okay. I'm born and raised here in San Diego. I ended up moving to Arizona for two and a half years. Why'd you so move to Arizona? My, uh, this was right before Big Brother. Oh, so it was like 2016. Okay. 2016. And then I was on Big Brother 2018. So I went out there and just for change, my first time leaving home and went out there. Then I ended up quitting my job of 11 years and I was just back to back change, different, different place of living, <laughs> quit my job, started doing, <laughs> yeah, then I started doing, um, uh, what do you, what, oof, see, I don't even remember. I was a server. I was server okay. at a sushi restaurant out in Arizona. And, and it was just crazy timing, man, because for Big Brother, I've been watching Big Brother since I was 10 years old and it's just the only show that I would watch. And it was just crazy timing. It was, you know, from me moving, then quitting my job, then, you know, getting out of a relationship and having the time to be able to like go to a casting call. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it was, yeah, so life before Big Brother was just uh, me growing, working on personal development, playing women's football. I played women's football for nine years. Yeah, I want to and- know about that. So how, how did that, t- like, did you, were you always, like, super athletic in, like, high school and stuff? And then you're like, man, I, yeah. I really just want to play football. Yeah, no. So I've been I've been playing sports my whole entire life. That's literally my life. I've been playing soccer since I was four. And, you know, in high school, I lettered in five different sports. Oh, wow. And I've always wanted to play football. Like, I wish I would have played in high school, but I've always loved playing catch. And I, you know, I was just like, okay, cool. I'm a girl. They're not going to, I can't play for an all boys football team. And mind you, I graduated 06. So it's kind of, it's not mm-hmm. too far, but it's, you know, it's still back there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So if I, if I had the chance to be able to play football in high school, I would have been so down. And my dad knew I was good. I had good hands and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so when I got out of high school, my dad saw this league for a women's football, full tackle, um, the highest, the highest, um, the highest level for women's football. And I ended up going to a tryout and made the team. This was in 2010. 2010 and yeah, and I freaking love it. So I wish I would have played earlier, but I didn't, but I'm so glad that I had, I had the opportunity to be able to play in a higher level and play full tackle. And it's amazing. That is awesome. I mean, I, and I played, well, I played football, but I was the kicker. So <laughs> no, no, that's, hey, that's I, an important job. I, it, it is. It's a, it's a specialty job. I didn't like to get hit and I didn't like hitting people. So it kind of worked out perfect. <laughs> that's funny. So we do not all have the same hair. So why should we use the same shampoo and conditioner? We shouldn't. Thanks to Function of Beauty, you don't have to. So for me, my hair is fine. I have a lot of it, but it's straight. And Victor's hair is coarse. It's thick. And it's uh, um, curly, very, very <laughs> curly. So we don't use, shouldn't use the same shampoo and conditioner. Um, and with Function of Beauty, you take like a four, it's like a very short quiz, like four questions. And they ask you, what do you want? What are your hair goals? What kind of hair do you have? You get to pick the color of your shampoo and conditioner. You get to pick the scent. You can go dye free. You can go fragrance free. And what's awesome is Function of Beauty is vegan and cruelty free. They mm-hmm. never use sulfates, paraben think it's phthalates i don't even know what that is but they don't use that Mm -hmm. mineral oils or any other harmful ingredients and function of beauty is the internet's top rated customized hair care brand with over thirty thousand five star customer reviews and counting to get started right now go to functionofbeauty.com slash coco to take your four part hair profile quiz and save 20 percent on your first order Don't spend another minute in hair misery. Go to functionofbeauty.com forward slash Coco to let them know that we sent you. That's functionofbeauty.com forward slash Coco. So you're in Arizona, you're working as a server, and then the opportunity comes to apply to Big Brother. Did you go to an open call or did you send in a video? I went to a casting call, yeah, an open call. So this was, it's just timing is crazy, man. Let me tell you, because I've always been in a relationship, you know, like the past 10 years, whether it was like a six-year relationship and then a four-year and oh wow, those are I, long I'm, I'm, relationships. That's oh, yeah, commitment yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, and so and what it is is like I'm a very people person, bubbly, and I just I get along with a lot of people. And I the people, you know, my exes that I was with before, they they would have some kind of thing because they 
they would feel like I'm like always flirting or I'm just like too friendly or it just didn't work out. So if I were to go on Big Brother and they knew I love Big Brother, then it would kind of be dismissing their feelings, uh-huh. which right. is crazy, you know? So <laughs> I just, I never even, you know, tried out for, you know, one of my dream shows that I've always wanted to go on. And um, it's, I went to a casting call. So the casting call was on a Sunday. I had to work on the Sunday. I was scheduled to work. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to go to this. It was in West Hollywood. I've never tried out for any kind of show or anything. And I was like, man, if I can get this covered, I will go. If I cannot get it covered, I guess I just won't go. And it just wasn't meant to be. So I was like hustling, trying to ask. I was asking everyone who can cover my, you know, my shift at the sushi spot. And the Friday, you know, that Friday right before the Sunday, it, someone was able to co- uh, cover it. And it was the last person that I asked. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goodness. I was like, thank you so much. And just like as a Big Brother fan, I'm like, man, I just want to at least go through the process of going through this you know I'm, I'm single I'm you know there's no one stopping me and I'm going to do this so I got it covered drove out to LA took six hours from Arizona oh my gosh. and asked one of my teammates if I could stay the night at their house in LA and and then at Sunday morning I went by myself waited in line for two hours by myself and it was a great experience and I you know met some cool people in line but just to know that it all worked out because I told myself, like, man, if I can if I can get this covered, I'm going. I'm going. If not, then whatever. And so <laughs> it happened, dude. And I was like, wow. It's just such a dream come true because I literally, when I tell you I watch no other TV, now it's before Big Brother. I, I, I literally watch nothing. It was just me and my dad. I watch every summer. Big Brother was our thing. After I get out of practice, we grab some food and we watch Big Brother. And so, you know, it, it's just, it's so surreal still. You know, and I'm so thankful and grateful for the opportunity and for for that to go on. And another thing, too, I want to say is another reason why I did not want to go try out for Big Brother is because I I think I've only said this a couple times in some interviews, but the people, you know, when they have their their uniforms or, you know, you have a competition and the girls have to wear tutu. Oh, not tutus, but like, let's say, there was a one where the girls had to wear like a, A like a really long dress and then the guys wore their whatever it's that one where they were tossing back and forth and trying to give them like a uh, liquid like oh, that, pass was, on the on, the that was on 16 yeah, yeah. they were like yeah. long dresses and then like yeah. tuxedos yeah but yeah so there's a bunch of different things where like the girls will wear so- certain things the guys will wear certain things and i was like man would they accommodate to like what i wear because i don't because i was like i don't wear girl clothes i i get the part like if if you have a punishment and you have to wear a tutu cool i'll wear a tutu right you know? yeah. right right I want to be able to wear with it because I, I haven't worn girl clothes since I was a little girl and I just little like a baby. So I'm like, <laughs> man, and I just would feel uncomfortable and I've never seen them really accommodate to someone mm-hmm. that dresses like me. And I was like, man, they would never pick me. So, yeah, that's a little side note, a little side story. So, yeah. And so then now wh- here I am. When you went to the open casting call, did you know like, wow, I just like nailed that or were you kind like what was it like for you? Um, yeah. So I remember, you know, waiting, waiting in line and going in our little group and they were asking me some questions and in my little, on my little paper too, I I even said like, you know, I play women's football and I said, I'm very outspoken. I'm not afraid to say what I need to say. Mm -hmm. If someone needs to say something or confront me, then I'll say, and I, you know, I'm huge in respect. So I I may, and I have high energy and I'm just very positive and Mm -hmm. just high energy and people can feel it. So when I walk into, you know, to the table and um, that's what they ended the, my, the casting lady ended up saying later. She was like, I just love your energy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I did take a shot of tequila right before. Cause I'm like, look, someone- <laughs> <laughs> I heard that help. <laughs> yeah. You know, I walked right up to the bar. I'm like, you know, let me take this, uh, tequila shot and help me loosen up a little bit. And I just remember walking up and just, just simply being me and, mm-hmm. and like a big smile, having good energy and like, and I was very confident in everything that I said. They asked me, like, who are my favorite players and why? And, right. um, you know, and, and I just and I said it and I, I just said it with confidence and just being real and mm-hmm. and not giving a damn if they pick me or not. But just still having fun with it. At the end of the day, just have fun. You know, it's funny when you know how 
Oh, so people that are listening, when you're going through this process, uh, you do this open call mm -hmm. and then you do another interview and then they fly you out and then you maybe have like three or four interviews out in LA, right? Depending on the circumstances. I remember when I was in LA doing, you know, when I'm in the rounds of uh, casting and right before I went into like one of the second or third interviews, which is getting closer down the line. Yeah. And you know how they have that, uh, co this guy like coaching you essentially, um, he, he was like, Hey, would you want a beer or anything like that or something? And I was like, uh, yes, <laughs> let me down one beer, you know? And so I don't know that just for me, it was one of those things that's like, God, I just need to relax and be myself and, 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 and just do what I need to do. Um, but yeah. So. Right. And it's, and it's hard because I know, I understand people, you know, people get so nervous and people are always asking like, what'd you do? What can you do? Okay. You're going to be nervous. It's inevitable. You're going to be. And you know, and if you can just remind yourself just to have fun with it and just be a little, you know, a few notches up from your regular, you know, energy and just have fun with it, you know, just have fun with it. And I always tell people, they'll, they'll always be like, Oh, I'm scared to go try out. I'm like, dude, if you're a super fan, you love big brother. Just go through the process. Wait right. in line. Talk to these other super fans. Wait in line and and go through the process of this amazing this amazing thing. So um, yeah, it's awesome. How did you guys did you guys both do uh, videos or casting calls? Um, Victor did a casting call and then I did a video because I'm not I would clam up. I'm not the Aww. type that could um, be the best version of yeah. myself like in that high tense situation. And I kind of knew that, but at the same time, there wasn't any, the closest casting call to Michigan was like, I think, oh, oh, Chicago. And I had never been to Chicago at that point in my, I hadn't even traveled at all at that point in my life. And so I was like, I'll just send in a video, you know, there's no way I'll hear back. And then, yeah, it just snowballed instantly. Um, but I think the video is good for the that people who awesome. want to like plan a little bit. I mean, mine wasn't super planned. This was back in the day when there was like no filters, no anything like that. Just straight talking right. to my camera. Like I'd probably would be so embarrassed to see that now, but, <laughs> um, just very, you know, it was just very like quirky what, um, and real, I guess is kind of what they were looking for. And it, it happened, but yeah, and they loved you. That's yeah. Awesome. So, so Casey, when, when you were, when you're starting to go through this process and they're like, Hey, we want you to go to LA to this hotel to kind of go, mm -hmm. what was your dad? Was he like just flipping, you know, like going crazy? Cause this is y'all show. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I didn't tell him till two weeks before I had to leave. And no so, way. Yeah. Wow. Cause I, and, I, and there was a point where, you know, going during the LA, the LA thing, it was my dad's birthday and I had to make up this thing where I had to like a business meeting or something far out. And I was like, dad, dad, I can't make it. And so I didn't tell him till two weeks out. And, but when I told him, because every season I'm telling you, he'd be like, Casey, just try out. Casey, go mm -hmm. try out. And I'd be like, yeah, dad, dad, yeah. Why would they pick me? He'd be like, go try out. Like, that's literally what me and my dad would talk about is football, sports, and big brother, mm -hmm. literally. And, uh, I didn't tell him. And when I told him, he was so excited. He was, you know, he, he knew, he believed in me so much. My parents believed me so much, you know, mm -hmm. when it's sports and all these things. And he was super, super excited. And, um, it was cool to be able to let him know and tell him and he was, he was, he was excited. It is scary when you are going through the process on, okay. So obviously I'm, my mom's my best friend. So my mom knew throughout the whole entire process, but like telling my dad, cause he gets so excited about stuff. <laughs> I was like, I have to wait till like kind of last minute mm -hmm. because the last thing you want after you go through all of this, you get picked you know, it's your dream. And then someone gets excited and then they tell the wrong person. And so it's just scary. You really have oh, yeah. to be very tight lipped until like you're just in, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. It is scary. And I know how my dad is. He brags about me all the yes. time. and embarrasses the <laughs> crap out of me. I'm like, dad, just stop. You know? And so, and yeah. even with my, well, yeah, my mom and my dad, I know my mom would just open her mouth and I'm just like, I can't trust, I can't trust you guys. Right. Like, you know? So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So you, you get on the show and, and what are you thinking? Like when you go into the house the first day, cause I know for pretty much everybody, that's the most surreal experience mm -hmm. you can have. Not not only being on the stage, you know, with Julie Chen and, you know, the mm -hmm. whole spiel, but then walking in for the first time and the door shuts behind you and you're like, this is it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, ju actually, just to rewind a little bit, right, right before going in and, you know, they kind of tell you, um, okay, you're top 50 or top oh, whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah. You know, <laughs> and so, you know, and so every day it's like I couldn't sleep. So for two months, it was like a two month process. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep. And I'm like, 
but I would still like, you know, go work out and I would still like prep, like as if I'm going in. Uh-huh. So I even told myself all the time, I'm like, I'm going on this show. I'm going on this show. I'm going on this show. And so me and my brother would talk about it all the time because I could trust my brother. And so, mm-hmm. and I literally remember sitting in my car, like before going to the gym and just so excited and like the feeling of actually, you know, them saying, Casey, you're going to go on the show. And this is before they gave me any confirmation or anything, but I felt it with yeah. in the very core of me where like, they're going to pick me and this is going to completely change my life and I'm going to kill this game. Yeah. And I just remember like yelling on the phone with my brother in my car of excitement, like, dude, this, this is, this is it. I'm going on this damn show and I'm about to kill it. You know? So it's mm-hmm. so crazy. And like, I can remember how I was feeling right before and for two months where I could not sleep. And I was just like, literally just immerse myself, but, but training and like, re, you know, going at, you know, rereading some books that, um, that, that helped me, you know, with like, you know, with people stuff and, you know, getting along with people and all these different things. And I was literally just putting myself into all of that before going in. Yeah. And- I was going to ask you, cause you do seem like someone that would prep like hardcore before a show. And yeah. I was wondering what like your prep routine, it would be like for, well, we can get into the challenge later, but like Big Brother, like knowing I read the only thing I did is I read like Dan's book trying to get me through like the casting process. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. um I would do I didn't like work out or anything, which I definitely should have. I didn't know it was like as <laughs> physical. Um I didn't work out for the amazing race either and that kicked my butt. So now I know like you've gotta definitely work out. But um what did you do? Did you you said you went to the gym and you read books? Yeah. So that's, that's a good question. So I like, I've always been going, I've always went to the gym and all this, Mm -hmm. except I was going like two times a day, you know, and I was really focusing on like what, you know, what I was doing. And then for the reading part, like I've always been, so I'm 32 now. When I went on to big brother, I was 30 years old. I started doing personal development when I was 25. So, and, and so it wasn't like an overnight thing, but I literally, I just went, I was rereading books that I read back when I was 20, you know, 25 Mm -hmm. or whatever the case, Mm -hmm. like how to win friends and influence people is a really good one. If you guys have never read that. Um, so when I was 25 and just, you know, I was literally immersing myself in books and audios and just building myself and working on myself, you know, and, Mm. and then that's how, that's why I say like the timing and everything, like when I turned 30, was the time where I'm like, okay, look, I'm like, per- I feel like I'm really personally developed mm-hmm. where, you know, I can, I can at least get, get through this. And I also said, so, you know, reading books and then just working on myself. And, uh, I also said when I got on the big brother, I was like, man, when Derek won, he was 30 years old. Mm-hmm. This is a sign. I am 30 years old. I'm about to win this. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, for sure. <laughs> And then fast forward, you know, you know, yeah, going like going into the Big Brother house. You you were asking like right when I got yep. on stage, see yep. Julie Chen, dude, it, it's like so surreal. I, I'm just like, man, I cannot believe that I'm about to get in this Big Brother house and play this game. And as soon as I step, you know, everything, you know, my interviews before going in the Big Brother house, I had a strategy, and everything that I said that I was gonna do, pretty much. To the T, it was executed throughout the season. And, you know, I said my my main two things is my, my social game. I know my social game is going to take me to the very end. Even though I'm good with games and competitions, mm-hmm. I know that alone will not take me to the very end. So I'm going to bank on this social social game, and that will take me to the end. And the competitions will come in as a bonus when they come. And so as soon as I stepped in, foot inside the house, that's when I started playing Big Brother. So I made sure everything I did was on purpose. I step in there, I smile, I jump around and I'm excited and people feel my energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and Tyler even told me, he was like, man, as soon as you walked in, I was drawn to your energy. And that's when we made our final two. But it was just, it was, it, everything I did, whether it was keep my mouth shut, whether it was be vague, whether it was, you know, say this to this person, say that, you know, and, but the main thing for me was not to you know, make any promises I could not keep. Cause I don't, I'm not, I'm there to work smarter, not harder. I'm not there to, you know, backtrack on all my lies and whatever I made up. So it was like, you know what? I'm just going to go in here, do me, be me, stay true to myself and not hide shit. You know what I'm saying? And be mm-hmm. as, 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 uh, um, as transparent as possible. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's super. It, it isn't when you're in big brother, you have to make decisions. Am I going to, just tell everyone kind of how I feel or am I going to act like I'm going along with the crowd and kind of get burnt later? It's very 
I don't know. It's tricky. Like it is. The, yeah. I mean, I when I was playing since I played twice, both times were very different, and the second time I didn't um, make. I didn't care. I just people knew who I was uh, loyal to, and I didn't pretend to like you, and I didn't pretend to do those things because I, I figured how, how how hard it was going back and trying to convince people who thought they were your friends that you backstabbed them. And yeah. so, like, I think being very transparent is important. It took me two times to learn that, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How? And, and it's like, you, you don't want to say, like, too much. Like, if, there, if I have, like, they say, if you have nothing nice to say at all, don't say it. Right. So it's not like, right. it, it was like, cho- the very being, like, choosy and picking your battles and like, do mm-hmm. I say this? Do I not? And it's literally like your mind's consistently going. And I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't able to sleep in there. And that's the thing I was worried about before going to the big brother house. Cause I would fall, you know, I get tired at eight 30, 9 PM at night. I'm like, dang, how am I going to stay up with everyone? <laughs> and, it just, and it just ended up working out. Cause I like, damn, I couldn't even sleep. You, but, you didn't sleep when you're in the big brother house. It was hard for me too. Oh my, my, my mind was always going. Like I would be up late, and I would like at night. I would have to try and transition my mind. Be like, okay, Casey, stop thinking about game, and let's just think about my family and my friends, and think yeah, about home. Shut and it off. I was able to, yeah. Re- yeah. It's a weird thing. I, I, you guys know what's up. It's weird as hell in there. So how <laughs> how uh, how far into the game did you start thinking, man? I I I might be knocking on the door of five hundred thousand dollars here. You know. Oh man, I knew it from the very beginning. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I mean, uh, I knew because you know I felt like you know in the beginning I just knew that I just need to like there's a lot of people in here I just need to lay low and not do too much right because mm-hmm. I'm not here to like I'm not here to whatever the airtime and try to mm-hmm. like. Um, like entertain the fans. No, I'm here to play a game that I absolutely love and I'm going to do what's right for me to make it to the end. And that's not trying to show out in the beginning, not trying to be in drama, not trying to be like, Oh, I'm better than you. No. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and that's, you know, and so in the very beginning and then going throughout, so I would say like even halfway all the way through, I was just always telling myself, and this is in a book that I've read before too. Like what you say when you talk to yourself is a book. It's an amazing book. If you guys haven't read it, but it's like when you talk to yourself and literally I told myself every day that I'm going to make it to the end. I'm going to make it to the final two. I'm going to make it to the end. I'm literally every single day. And the pain that, you know, it's a, you have some mental toughness of being there, you know, and to oh, be able yeah. to control it. You know, you guys understand you have to be able to control your emotions. So I always had to put my mind in check because I'm like, man, this is hard, this is, but this is temporary. This is temporary. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to win this. I'm going to make this. There's nothing that's going to stop me. So literally, I would talk to myself every day. And I, you know, with that, just telling myself, it, I just knew I had this feeling that I was going to make it to the end. And, and I was very fortunate for, you know, level six in our, in our alliance that we built something so solid. You know, mm-hmm. so, so yeah. solid where we have so so much trust within our group, and we worked so well together as a group. Everyone did their part, and man, it, it's just I'm so glad that you know we had we had our little group and That's our little team. That's hard to do. It's hard to find people um, like six people that are going to stay oh, loyal yeah. to each other. That's that a big. Go to that's the a other big side. number to actually stay loyal. Um, you don't oh, yeah. think that until you're in there. Because then everyone starts all these side alliances or there's uh, showmances brewing and you're just like, you know, crap, that that six turns into eight and then it just explodes. I mean, that's <laughs> but your six stayed loyal and that's awesome. Usually um, you just need like one or two people like you had Tyler. Yeah. Tyler was your number yeah. one throughout and yeah. you guys made it all the way to the end. Yeah, it's crazy because we would envision together, you know, I, I know they, they didn't show that, you know, they didn't show a lot of me and him, but like together but we we did so well in playing our parts and we we would talk about it often and cry together you know and and just talk about like okay in the final two we're gonna how are we gonna hold our hands we're gonna hold it waffle style (laughs) you know and so we would when we envision it and we would feel it together and we're like dude we are making we are going to make it and we felt it together and that was my brother that's my brother i mean they're all my family angela's Mm -hmm. my sister and then and yeah, and like you, 
10, 10, stop. <laughs> and then, gosh, and then you, you know, yeah. And so when we, we, when we formed it in the beginning, we kept telling each other too. We're like, cause I, I, obviously we know it's like, okay, sometimes these alliances can just go into shambles, yeah. but we had, we, we ended up getting in this group and we told each other, like every, everything has to stick within our group and we're going to be very discreet and not act as if we are an alliance, like the other house, the other <laughs> side of the house. They were just so obvious. And, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> So, I mean, they, I, to be fair, they made us look real good, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever, were you ever worried that Tyler was going to cut you? No, no. Okay. And I've, I know, under, I, I know a lot of people have been like, oh my gosh, like at the mm-hmm. end, like, oh, why'd you pick Tyler and that JC? And I was like, what? Like I got out the house. I was like, it never even crossed my mind mm-hmm. to like that he was going to cut me and I wasn't going to cut him. So when I got out the house and they were interviewing me like, oh my gosh, why don't you keep JC? I was just like wait, what? You know, so there's a lot of people, a lot of things that people don't see, but you know, I I felt it really deep down with Tyler because day one, he came to me. I didn't go to him. You get what I'm saying? He came to me. And later on, he told like, he, later on, he told told me, he was like, look, Casey, you're the only one I went to. Everyone else came to him. And so, um, I I just, I felt something, you know, you can feel, you can feel it. Like I, I can, I felt it. And so I was like, you know what? You're my guy to the, all the way to the end and we're about to make it. And so I, I didn't doubt him, you know, towards the end he did. He, I know he was getting a little closer with Angela mm-hmm. and they had this like little thing going. And you know, there, there was a little bit of doubts going on in my head, but um, in order for me to lock my spot into the final two and to the very end, I need to bust my ass and win these last, you know, these HOHs to have full control, yeah. you know, cause maybe you never know what would happen. Um, even though he would tell me, it was like, Casey, if I, if I could just prove to you that I would take you because he knew like the whole situation, he was like, you know, I, I, you know, I wish I had the opportunity to. So, um, but well, it is what it is. Yeah. At least yeah, you didn't I mean, have to find out. Right. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's great. So you win and now you go out to the real world and now your normal is not normal anymore. Everything's flipped on its head because you're you you have that you won right and then you have this quote unquote celebrity right that that's kind of like because I don't consider us celebrities right yeah I don't either but I don't either I, it's it's kind of like that right so how yeah, how do people you, get excited to yeah, see people you. get excited to see you so how mm-hmm. how did you transition oh man I mean you guys know like when you get out it's like a slap in the face it's like <laughs> oh my goodness because it's live and so when you get out and you're like man it's just so overwhelming and but i appreciate all the love Mm -hmm. and so when i do see people and i you know people get excited it it gets me excited because i know like i put myself in their shoes and if they're excited and that about big brother that's how i am with big brother when i watch i feel like i know these people you know and so i get where they're coming from you know Mm -hmm. and I, i get where they're coming from and when they show me love and their energy I can't help but to show my love and my energy. Literally, when I got out the house, I my my voice. I lost my voice for like a few months because I can't help when someone yells "Let's go" and I'm yelling "Let's go," you know, yeah. <laughs> or when someone's just like so high energy and and just wanting to talk to them even more. But it was very draining on my body, and you know, I got sick a couple of times because it was just like I was just straining my you know my, <laughs> yeah. my just talk. I was just talking a lot, but. I appreciate all the love and support. Everyone's mm-hmm. been so amazing. And yeah, I don't look at myself as a celebrity at all. It's, and I always tell people too, because they're like, oh my gosh, you're like a, no, I'll just be like, no, I just happen to play a game that I absolutely love. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's it. And, I was myself. Uh, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not yeah, acting I right my, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Big Brother fans are awesome and oh, yeah. super appreciative for, for the whole entire thing. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I can't complain at all. So, how long after uh, how long after Big Brother ended did you get contacted by uh, MTV or or Viacom? Um, it was almost when my contract was over, so a year contract. A year, sure, yes. okay. Yeah, oh, so like pretty a, quick. That's pretty quick. Yeah, they're yeah. they're pretty on the money with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pre- yeah, it was pretty much a year. Um, yeah. Was that an easy decision for you? Like, oh yeah, definitely want to do reality TV and do MTV type stuff or was it a harder decision? Yeah. Cause you know, when I got out of big brother, you know, they didn't, the challenge, the challenge didn't contact me yet, but people were like, oh my gosh, you should go on the challenge, you know, mm-hmm. cause you know, the competition and all that stuff. And then I never watched it from like beginning to end. I watched real world back in the days, but when I, I saw my dad watched the challenge and he was like, Casey, look at these, mm-hmm. you know, those challenges. So I was like seeing a couple episodes 
And so when I seen it and then people were like, oh, you should get on the challenge. I was like, man, I don't know if I would want to go on there because it's too much drama. You know, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> you know, it's like, and that's what it looked like. Right. I'm right. like, there's too much drama. I mean, I can handle myself. If yeah. so, you know, it, mm-hmm. you know, if someone were to come, come at me, I can come right back at you. No problem. Mm-hmm. But do I want to put myself in that situation? And so when they contacted me, I was a little hesitant. I was like, man, I, do I want to do it? Do I, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, okay, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And because I love competition. I love people. You know, when yeah. someone asks me to compete, I'm like, you know what? I'll never know unless I try it. My dad always says, try everything once. If you don't like it, then don't do it anymore. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going I'm to do it. And uh, yeah, that's that. <laughs> and what, how, did you, how did you prep to go into the challenge? Let's see. Right before. Okay. So, um, I was doing, I was switching up my workouts a little bit. I was incorporating more like swimming. I was doing more yoga. Cause you work out uh, every doing, day anyway. So yeah, that's yeah, always yeah. part of your routine. So, okay. Yeah. So every day, cause I was, I would usually go to like the gym, do workouts mm-hmm. where I go to the park and run some routes with some of my teammates. Um, but I was, I was incorporating more swimming cause I see that they do swimming. I was incorporating more like some yoga cause I know it's like balancing core is everything. I right. was doing more CrossFit, which I don't do usually do CrossFit and yeah. And just continuing like reading books and keeping my mind right. And mm-hmm. And yeah. And so how is the challenge? Like when you walk in or, I mean, I don't really, so you're with all these people. Are these people like louder than you thought? Do they, are they different than you thought? Does it feel like big brother? What does it feel like? Um, yeah. So when I first saw everyone, everyone was cool as hell. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know, every, yeah. yeah. Everyone is super cool. And that's mm-hmm. why when you see like TV outside looking in, it's like, it's a whole nother perspective. But when you're actually in there, just same with big brother, I'm sure you guys watched big brother before. It's a whole nother perspective Mm -hmm. outside. And then when you're inside, it's a whole nother ball game. And so when I met everyone, everyone was super cool. Everyone's super cool. And I'm trying to think, cause there was like a, you know, there was a whole process. Like we, we met, you know, we met in a, I'm not, I don't want to say too much, but we met in a location. Then Mm -hmm. we ended up going to, then we ended up, like a few days later going to the bunker and then Mm -hmm. so we kind of saw each other before and then um but walking in yeah walking in there I was like you know what I'm just gonna get to know these people I know that these people go on year after year so they have past relationships they they have you know they have things going on that I don't even know so Mm -hmm. that was that was a game in itself having to figure out and study and figure out like who used to work with each other who doesn't like each other anymore who you know Mm -hmm. who used to be together who didn't you know so it was like that was a game in itself and then being new where it's like who am I to talk, talk, talk in here when I just need to keep my mouth shut and just be a good listener? So, um, overall, people were great. The bunker living situation, I, I would say that Big Brother is mentally tougher. Mm-hmm. Okay. Big Brother is less freedom. So, you're Big Brother, you know, I couldn't whistle, couldn't, we couldn't hum, but, you know, we mm-hmm. couldn't take naps, right? We couldn't take naps in the in in the bunker. We were able to take naps. You can whistle, you can hum, you can sing, because <laughs> mm-hmm. it wasn't like being filmed live. But they're similar in a lot of ways, but they're also different in a lot of ways. So, and yeah. Which one did which one did you like better? Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like because Big Brother is Big Brother is life. So I, 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 would, I would have to. It, that's hard. I, I I love them both. I love the challenges on the challenge. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Let, let, let's like, let's put yes. it this way. If if now right, let's say now and your your contract's open and Big Brother and the challenge both contact you at the same time and say, <laughs> "Do on, you Victor. want to go back?" <laughs> <laughs> would you choose oh, hot seat <laughs> and if money wasn't involved like right, right. it was like no money let, okay, love. Yeah, they can match each let, other let's say yeah. let's say it's all yeah, the same matches. oh my gosh um oh <laughs> i would have to say i would have to probably say big brother okay and that's and you know and I just, I was just that's curious. Hard. But that's, it, it's, that's hard. At least you really liked both of them, though. Yeah, you really like yeah, both of them. And it's good. also good to also, like, have respect for where you started, yeah. too. You know yeah, what I mean? For because sure. without one, there's not there's not the other. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And so, but... For sure. And, I mean, because it's like, um, 
Dang, I was going to, I forgot what I was going to say. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I have it's me all the time. No, I no, have a lot good. of brain farts. <laughs> me too. I have a lot of real farts. But <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. That's hey, neither, me too. <laughs> <laughs> that's neither here hey, that's nor that. Hey, that slop in the big brother house, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it got your guys' stomachs gone because I know it made mine go. What made sure. Victor's go was he cooked squid because he was like a have not and got squid oh, or yeah. octopus. And it was this, it was those squid, boy, it yeah. was three boys and they just stunk for the whole week it was so gross oh, yeah. their oh farts goodness. were so bad and you know that's, <laughs> that's what makes me a little disappointed they don't show the have not food as much as they used to you know yeah I mean? they don't it is tougher they don't they. yeah it yeah. is so that's what i was gonna say okay before going on the challenge mm-hmm. right you had this i have this look of okay there's too much drama these people are crazy yeah yeah now i meet them everyone's awesome mm-hmm. so it's like i'm so glad that i was able to try it and do it because it's like you know, you know, the TV shows, they love the drama, they love the fighting, they love all that stuff. So that's, they, they'll, they'll see that and enhance it as much as possible. And they're like, oh my gosh, the drama. So I, I, I'm glad that I was see, able to see both perspectives, you know, like seeing the show, I'm like, ah, no, I don't want to do it to so going on. I'm like, okay, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do it again. Yeah, so, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And so, so what's next for you now? What's, uh, you think you're going to do the challenge again or? Cause that becomes kind of like a lifelong thing if you want it to, right? Yeah, I would definitely not do them for the rest of my life. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, that's a good question. Like, right when I got out of Big Brother, um, I started working on my brand. So just building my brand because I, I know that, you know, I wanted to be able to capitalize as much as possible. And I've mm-hmm. always had an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mind where what can I do? What can I do? And, like, wh- what am I passionate about? And what can we move forward with? And so, you know, coming out of Big Brother, then I got a challenge. So, I mean, if they asked me to come back, I would definitely come back, you know? Yeah. If if not, totally fine. I got, you know, there's so many other things that I'm working on and, you know, that I would love to focus on. Um, but I, I would think, like, you know, I'm still young, I would have, and I would like to say. And <laughs> if, I can do the, if I can do the challenge for a couple more years and compete, which I absolutely love to do, then I will do it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, nowadays I'm working on building a brand, uh, and just working, you know, I got a bunch of stuff that I'm working with, like, you know, putting content out there and yeah, we absolutely. have this, we have this, we have this new brand with the mind strong athletics where it's actually a personal development program combined with fitness. So everything that I'm about when putting into one, so it's exciting that, you know, it's yeah, finally coming awesome. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So it's, it's really cool and something that I'm very passionate about. And I know that can give so much value to people out there. And that's, yeah, you know, just trying to, trying to capitalize and, um, and give people the good, you know, the good value out there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, one quick question, Nicole does have questions from, uh, uh, listeners, or, well, actually, but, I think we pretty much covered. Oh, we them. might now have covered them. Looking back, I do have one question for you, though. All right, so dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> what, what is the the one thing that you wanted to buy when you won? You know, there's like that <laughs> one thing that you're like, oh, I can finally buy this, or I can pay off something, or you know what I mean. That one thing that you wanted to do when you're like, fuck, I got this money now. You know? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm trying to think back. Um, after after Uncle Sam's takes like half, yeah, <laughs> Dude, crazy, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, that part. And so I would have to say, I mean, just paying off my bills, mm-hmm. yep. paying off my bills, like a thing was, but paying off my bills and yeah, and just making sure my family was good. Was that a? I mean, wasn't that such a breath of fresh air? Paying everything off, just being like, yeah, ah. it, it was, it was. And for me, because like, I, there's just always like I'm always thinking about like you know like bills, or I'm always thinking about like just business and all these different things. But yeah, it was just to because I use like a lot of credit cards for um, a lot of events in my business, like mm-hmm. in my business that I was in for like paying to go to these events, paying for these seminars, paying for like these personal development things that I was doing. So, absolutely. And, but, I, but I always knew I was like, you know what, this is temporary. I know I will be able to pay this off somehow. And then, you know, big brother comes off, come, you know, comes, comes around, but yeah, I mean, winning the money was awesome. It's all gone now. So <laughs> it goes yeah. fast. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just I was kidding. gonna say. I, still, <laughs> I was about I, to say. I was, like, she, <laughs> I was about to have a conversation with like, Nicole right. after this, being like, "Oh my god, she spent all her money." But money can, it can <laughs> go fast yeah. if you buy a house. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I haven't even bought a car. I bought a house, but besides that, I 
I mean, oh, that's awesome. I'm pretty good at that's sa- awesome. I'm pretty good at saving. I just pretend I don't have it. But I, Me um, too. But otherwise, yeah, because it can go fast. It can go. I want to oh, save dude. it for like our dream house or something, or yeah. our kids. And um, I'm sure I could be investing and making money, but I'm just like I'm too scared. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's awesome. I mean, yeah, because I I didn't get a. I didn't get a new car, you know. Yeah. I just had a crack in my windshield for the past five <laughs> months, and I just got it fixed because I got a good-ass deal. <laughs> but, um, I'm very – I don't – a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm very uh, – I want, I want to say, like, I'm close to, like, a minimalist. Like, I'm close to, like – You're frugal. Good. You're frugal. I'm very frugal with, awesome. with my money, and I've always been like this. This was before, like, Big Brother 2. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, you know, and I'm now in an apartment – I mean, it's four of us that live in an apartment, so we're splitting the rent four ways. Oh, so nice. it's like, you know, so it's like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm very thankful and grateful that, you know, I did have some, you know, some kind of like, you know, like financial and business education before and just being, you know, trying to be smart with it. But um, yeah. it's exciting. It's exciting and so thankful. And when I got out the house, I always even tell my girlfriend, I was like, you know what? I'm acting as if I only won fifteen thousand uh, dollars you yeah. know i'm not uh, you know and and that's that and she knows like she knows i'm super frugal i'm like she wants to buy a paper towel stand i'm like babe you don't need a paper towel stand <laughs> 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 the, paper st- the paper towel stands up just fine on the counter it does not you know so it's it's yeah, funny it's that's so, funny. <laughs> so so on the challenge do you wrap your arm around josh and say we're a million bucks <laughs> In front of everybody, <laughs> so yeah, often. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's funny. It was cool to have Josh in there. Yeah, I was, um, was you it? Know, we, we, oh, sorry, we I hung was, out. But, no, no, no. I was Go gonna ahead. say, was it comforting knowing there was other Big Brother players in there? Yeah, you know, and especially Josh, because me and him vibed out really well before going on. You guys um, the have challenge. similar personalities, yeah, I would say. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I told Josh too. I was like, I wasn't a big fan of you on your season, but when <laughs> I, you, you meet him after, I'm like, dude, he, he's a heart of gold, you know? He, he, has he really the does. Best heart. <laughs> and he's, he's a ball so of energy. He's so nice. He's <laughs> he so is. sweet. He yeah. is, man. He, and he's real. And, you know, I know a lot of people on challenge, so they, they make fun of him and it's all friendly. That's what I noticed on the challenge. It's all friendly, like fights. You know what I'm saying? Like friendly arguments. Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there's some like serious ones, but you know, they, they, they kind of just mess with him with, cause he cries and gets emotional. And, um, but he, he's real as hell and he's mm-hmm. such a good guy and I, I love him. So I was so, super thankful to have him in there. And, um, there was a couple people I knew before going in the challenge. Like I, I met Kayla. I don't know if you guys are watching the show, but there's Kayla. I met, you know, I've known Josh mm-hmm. and yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool that you have somebody there at least because going in there blind, right, is, is completely different. Yeah. And it was cool going in there, you know, with Fessy, Bailey and Swaggy because, you know, there's people that I know, but these are also people that I did not work with <laughs> on Big Brother. So, um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I mean, at least, at least we knew them. I mean, su- super cordial. And I'm sure you guys seen some clips that you'll probably see later on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It'll, it'll get interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah, it'll get interesting. It will get very interesting. But I love it. I love every second of it. And definitely, are you guys watching it? Um, I watched the first episode and yeah. I have to catch up because it's, um, I don't know. It's a lot. It's going to be the yeah. first time that I'm actually like watching the full thing because yeah. I haven't ever seen it. But uh, right. it's just different for me, I guess. I yeah. like com- yeah, for sure. I kind of like competitions and stuff, but I more like the hanging out type stuff. And I don't like vibe well with like the drinking and the drama. Yeah. So yep. it's like you said, being there is probably a lot different than watching it. Um, yep. And so when I, I that, watch it, it's just, it's different for me. Yeah. I totally get where you're coming from. Cause I'm like, I was never into like, you know, drama, drinking this, mm-hmm. you know, and seeing it. I'm like, I, I just, it just doesn't do it for me. And, um, I know back in the day, the show used to be very like, you know, people, they would have hard liquor and all these things. So now it's like, they just have, they just had like beer and no hard liquor. So I feel like it's a oh, little more calmed down than what, that's yeah, good. Than what it used to be, <laughs> but they still, they still feed you the alcohol because they want, you know, they want right. people uh, to, to like act up. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, totally understandable. I mean, 
Yeah, it's hard when you watch a show and it's just like drama, drama. I'm like, dude, let me just see the people compete. That's why I love Big Brother. It's like you're competing. It's a family show and mm -hmm. you can still, you know, have fun with it. But Nicole, I have a question for you. Okay. Ooh. Would you do the challenge? No, <laughs> I, w I wouldn't. I couldn't. Come on. No. We come together, Nicole. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't think I could handle it. But uh, maybe if I train. Victor, you did do it, right? Yeah, I know. I, I'm done. I'm done with, I'm just generally done with social media. Uh, or not social reality media, just TV. reality TV. I'm, you know, I'm a trooper now with state police. And I just... My life, my real life is an adventure in itself now. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm good with it. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So you were, you were on, I, I didn't get to see your season, but, yes. um, it was, did you like it? Uh, or you just... no, not really. <laughs> no, uh, no? Yeah. he didn't even like post the picture he's supposed to post saying yeah. he was on the season. Like... I just, yeah, it just wasn't for me. And, and just right after that, I was like, all right, I, I think I'll be pretty much done with everything. And then, you know, the amazing race came by and that was something that I was able to do with Nicole. And that was in a, a real adventure around the world. I am glad that he oh. did the challenge though, because it was something I think he needed to come to terms with where you're presented these opportunities. And I didn't want to be the reason he didn't take it. And and so when he did do, do it, I think when he was there, he just kind of realized, wow, like this just isn't his lifestyle and not saying that yeah. it has to be their lifestyle. But when Vic was on, it was like pushing the hard liquor and pu it was like mm. pushing the drama, I think a little too much. And so, and he's a good looking guy. Um, of course, they probably want him like yeah, to interact sure. with other girls. And so, um, that, yeah. and Natalie was on there and that was someone that like, didn't like that didn't we didn't really get along with not that we really didn't get along uh, with her but it was just like drama on season 18 right. and so she kind of made it harder for victor there so it was just like a lot of stuff i think yeah. he had to go through makes sense um and then coming back home uh, i think he realized okay like we are got a house we're getting our life together and because it could have become a lifestyle for him and that had to be yeah. something he chose and yeah and it's not to say awesome. they didn't call me back or anything because they did yeah. uh, a couple times to go back and i was like you know it's right. just not for me and i'm just gonna start working and you know <laughs> and now Good where i am you. now so i'm happy yeah it I, worked out. I just want to say that because uh my girlfriend and i we watched amazing race and we got to we watch your guys' season and we've been oh. rooting for you guys you guys did Thanks. so good man. <laughs> and it was like it was so awesome to watch you guys and we just really wanted you guys to pull through and win but you guys made it far and so uh matt we we love you guys just want to say that uh, you guys would be I, I, so cool to watch on the amazing race would yeah, you do that you do. I, I would do Amazing Race if they asked yeah. me to, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, like watching you guys and I watch your guys' season on Big Brother and you, you guys as, you know, as people are amazing people and I respect you guys a thousand percent. And so I just want to say that I do love you guys and, you know, see you guys perform and it, it's it's awesome now to be on your guys' you know, Coco Caliente. <laughs> this is it's super exciting and super honored to be on here with you guys because oh, you, think guys, you guys are cool people. We think that about you too. We yeah. love watching oh, you like you succeed so and take your vibrant personality on even watching your stuff on Instagram. It's so fun. Um, Thank I can you tell so that much. I can tell that like playing a game with you would be like fun, you know, like, <laughs> being on reality TV with you would be fun. So, and that's yeah. how I look at life too, man. It's just like, I, I just, I don't take life too seriously. I literally just have fun and just, and just, just joke. I joke around a lot. I can, I can be, you know, I joke around a lot and. Um, and I think, you know, just bringing that to w whatever aspect of life that, you know, you're in and just, it just makes life so much easier and it's helped me so much. And I'm like, okay, if I'm playing a game, I'm just going to have fun, man. Just, just have fun, talk shit and just whatever, but mm -hmm. just be really cool and actually care for people. So, um, no, yeah, it's, it's, Definitely. it's awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the show and, and we, we can't wait to watch all this. I am going to get on to now that you told <laughs> yeah. me, like, I loved hearing this perspective because I only had like Vic's perspective and then what I saw on TV. So this is opening a new door for me and I'm going to catch up and watch you kick butt. Hopefully. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I yes. appreciate you guys so much. No. And thank you for, you know, having me on here. And um, I, I got a question. Those little, the little, the little drawings that you guys do. Like, I don't know. Those are you guys. Yeah, you're gonna are get you guys one. Gonna make one of me too. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You can just text me what picture you want uh, drawn. 
Oh, I don't. Oh, okay. I guess I could. I could do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it could be anything. Cool. You know, she could. She can. If you're in a scenery or something, she can just take you out of that scenery and just do you. So it doesn't have to be just like a portrait of just your right, face. Right. You right. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Cool. We- awesome. Sounds good, guys. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Casey. Anytime. Have a good you have day. a good one. All right. You guys have a good one. Stay well out there. Oh, that was a fun conversation. She's so, like, upbeat. She's go, go, go. I don't know if I can keep up with her in a day. I mean, she seems like she's hitting on all cylinders 24-7, yeah. but no, she's... I'd like she, to try. She's a joy. Yeah, she oh, was a joy sure. to talk to. That, that mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Uh, so, Nicole, what do you have for us? What do you have in store for us for weird or normal? Well, I was thinking about the cake that my mom made for you for your birthday, the Oreo um, ice cream cake. Mm-hmm. And then I started, That was really good, by the way. Yeah. And I started thinking about, okay, so my grandma makes the crust um, without the white parts in the Oreo, and my mom just crushed up all the Oreo. So then it made me think that people do take apart their Oreos when they're eating them, and they lick out all the cream mm-hmm. out of the middle, and then they eat the cookie. You're an Oreo lover. How do you like to eat your Oreos? Uh, it depends. So if I'm if I'm really... If I just want to have a, like a classic milk and cookies, mm-hmm. I will dip the Oreo mm-hmm. and then I'll bite all the way through. I won't take it apart. Uh, if I'm really having one of those days where I, I really want to enjoy it, I, <gasps> I go really weird and I take the spoon, I put the cookie on the spoon, I dip the entire cookie into the milk, mm-hmm. let it sit for a little bit, and then I take the entire cookie out and then just eat the whole cookie when it's nice So and you soggy. don't peel your cookies apart ever? I used to okay. peel the cookie apart, but then I wouldn't lick it. I would just completely take off that um, middle, white, yeah. the white part and eat it first and mm-hmm. then eat the cookie. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But then the cookie probably doesn't taste very good without the cream. It does. I'm not an Oreo person at all. What pissed me off, I think <laughs> my sister, uh, I think my sister my mom i can't remember it was such a long time ago but they would eat the middle or eat the cookie and leave the cream in the in the box oh i would love that then you can make it like you can have a big cream well i'd one. be like no why are you doing you're ruining that you have to if you take the cookie yeah. you gotta you yeah. gotta do it's kind of yeah. e- either eat it or dispose it but you're not gonna put it back into the packaging <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like that's that's weird that's weird <laughs> that, that is, is weird weird. because who do they expect someone just to pick up the cream yeah and what, oh great or the opposite i've seen people where they eat just the cream and put the cookie back in the packaging and I could like, see doing that because it's if you just like st- take it off with a butter knife, mm-hmm. and then you would probably like to eat the other part in milk. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but <laughs> um, I've just seen people do some weird things with Oreos, just breaking them apart, licking. It's just nasty. Yeah, uh, and then using their teeth to scrape off the white <laughs> and stuff. And you see the, the teeth marks in the white <laughs> stuff. Yes, that's the only way though that I would like an Oreo is just to eat the middle. The I will say the best ice cream I've ever made is making cookies and cream ice cream myself, mm-hmm. and it's a process, right? Because you, you got to mash up the the cookie and then you got to mix it into the vanilla ice cream. You're and I've a done- very good um, Blizzard ice cream <laughs> maker, the best, way better than Dairy Queen, McDonald's, even anything. I will say it's painful on the hands, but it's worth the work. I mean, it, I'm telling you. I it, mean, I don't even like the cookies you're putting in there, but when I take a bite of it, I'm like addicted. <laughs> it takes like, it's like a 10 minute process in the kitchen, which in reality, 10 minutes is quite a little bit of time to be dedicated to Mixing. making your ice cream, <laughs> right? But it, it it turns out really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Nicole, the Spanish word of the day. Okay. All right. Spanish word of the day is galleta. 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 Mm. Galleta. Cookie. Yeah, you, no, it's that not. was just you just shot in the dark, I didn't did. you? Yeah, yeah. was it? Was it really? Yeah, galleta oh my gosh. cookie. <laughs> I did not expect that to be right. That doesn't sound like cookie at all. Say it, galleta. Yeah, galleta. And they also say it like "te voy a dar una galleta," right? Um, they could be, "I'm going to give you a cookie," or "I'm going to slap you upside the face." Oh. <laughs> That's yeah, that can also those mean, are like, very smack. different things. It's like I guess more like a slang term, you know. Slap uh, across the face, like you know how uh, a knuckle sandwich. 
You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. yeah that something makes like sense. something like that where you're like, yeah. oh, it's a knuckle sandwich. Well, I'm going to punch you in the face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, oh my gosh. That's a whole nother thing you have to learn when you learn Spanish slang and jokes. Like, well, I'm not going to get jokes. I'm going to be like, wait, this word means this. And I had this word means this. Okay. Now put it together. <laughs> you're, so you're going to, it, you just want to learn Spanish to be able to talk yeah. and get by and do, you know, and get the basics across. And then over time, see the problem. Okay, I see what you're saying. I won't be completely submerged where it's my only yeah, like, because communication. Yeah, we because don't, there's nobody Spanish up here for you to talk to but me. And when will we be having to talk Spanish unless we're like talking about people in front of them? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's not <laughs> it's not really an <laughs> idyllic situation, an ideal situation. Um, but you could still learn it. And you know then what? Tra- you know your what goal wanna... should be your goal should be when we go to Puerto Rico, you can talk to my family. Yes. that should be the. Goal. I mean, that is what it is. I would like to not have your parents have to pick between talking to me or your grandma. Yeah, you know what I mean. That bugs me because I feel bad. But another thing is too is I would love. To know what people are saying because they look at me and this is what they do. And they start talking Spanish and they start talking crap. They like don't at, talk at, crap. Okay, yeah, the car insurance place. <laughs> we are car, not car insurance, car rental place. They totally started talking Spanish because they did not want me to know what they were saying. They could rip me off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that is definitely a possibility. It is nice. And then sometimes pretend people pretend they only speak Spanish. And I just heard him talk English and I need help with something that happened in Florida as well. And so it'd be nice to be like, oh, well, I speak Spanish too. Yeah, well, what's <laughs> cool. And that, that, that's something that I do miss being able to do with my family. Like, let's mm-hmm. say we go to Walmart or something and you see something going down, like literally right next to you or somebody's being like really rude or something. And mm-hmm. they're like right by you. And I can go to my mom and be like, mira, mira, mira que está pensando ella. Ay, eso, eso. Huh? No me diga. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. See, so and, you do talk about situations. Like, well, you, yeah, for you sure. guys do the same thing, but you In have English. to whisper, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's literally, yeah. you guys say, or you text, you know, like, oh my God. Or like Barb on saying? The Bachelor when she told her husband to say something mm-hmm. bad in Spanish on national television. She's like, ayuda me di algo, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> help me say something bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you just have that, you feel a little bit safer, I guess. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, and, and some people have, have um i remember i went to puerto rico once and uh the waiter came up to me and said uh sir can what can i get for you today and i go yo me, yo me parezco gringo <laughs> i was like do i look white do i look like american like you know like mm-hmm. i don't speak spanish They're like oh i'm so sorry you know but in spanish you know i perdon you know te parece gringo you know it's like well <laughs> <laughs> oh you never told me that before yeah so they thought that you looked gringo means white yeah yeah, yeah. they thought i look white you know and mm-hmm. that i didn't speak spanish or anything and i was like well no i'm Puerto and you speak really, really good Spanish is what I hear from people who speak Spanish. Well, yeah, I mean, it was my first language. Mm-hmm. The only problem is that now I speak more English, obviously. I, know. I went to college and I did, mm-hmm. you know, literature and all my classes were English. So my English is obviously better developed than my Spanish, but I can still read, write, and talk Spanish. And- Do you feel confident still? Like, have you noticed since moving up here with people who don't speak Spanish, have you noticed any difference with your um, Spanish or... Do you still feel just as confident? I feel just as confident because, I mean, there's sometimes there's words that, like, for example, when I talk to my grandma or my mm-hmm. uncle, I have to, like, it takes me a beat to be like, oh, shit, what's that word? What's that word? Mm-hmm. And then they'll tell me the word and be like, okay, yeah. Once I start talking to them, I, I feel fine, right? Because it sounds like you're still doing great. Yeah, and then me and Marino, you know, my best friend, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll switch right back and forth in yeah. the same conversation between English and Spanish. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's fluid um, depending on what we're talking about or how we want to convey the message that we're, we're, we're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. It's If I go to Puerto Rico, within just a day or two, I'll feel comfortable you know just like getting right back into it's it. just getting right back into it because that's yeah, all I don't you're ever speaking want you to be able to lose that so it's like if you need to make several other phone calls a day just to talk <laughs> Spanish, you well should. you know i think at this point in my life i'm not gonna lose it mm-hmm. i feel like if i was younger you know and, yeah. and then i learned a little bit or like my italian like my italian's pretty much gone mm-hmm. and i used to speak italian mm-hmm. you know so that that's different because but your parents you'll always have them and your sister to talk exactly you, know I mean? you can 
call them up anytime and yeah because you don't get to use it much here so it makes no, me think ab- about it sometimes. absolutely absolutely but yeah if you if you're able to learn and then we can go to puerto well, rico and you can talk to my family good. well you could still talk to them you know and they could talk slow and then i'll be there to it's translate very i think i've said this before too it's very scary to talk to someone in that that's their first language and then you're trying to talk to them it's I feel very insecure about that. I feel I think that's why I haven't like tried to really, really learn because I don't have that confidence just to go up with someone and be like, Here, I think I know what I'm saying because mm-hmm. I'm gonna be very embarrassed if I say something completely wrong. Well, because I'm just yeah. you know, I'm sensitive about that. So I'm even sensitive about just speaking in general. Yeah. So even speaking on this podcast, I'm very like, oh my gosh, you mm-hmm. know. But mm-hmm. so I want to be very comfortable if it is something that I do, not just like mediocre. Well, and it's it is good that you say that because that that puts in perspective all the people that come to this country that don't speak English as their first language Mm -hmm. and do their best to get by. And then some people can dismiss them as uneducated when they're trying to speak a second language as best they can to communicate across, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and it's all, it's broken up, but they're still able to get their message across and they're broken up English. Oh yeah. And I don't think of those people as not being intelligent. I automatically know, wow, that's your second (laughs) language and they're speaking with me. They're like talking to me in it and I can't even uh, (laughs) probably say a sentence in their language. Yeah. So, um, well that's good. Yeah. I think that people do need, that's a great point to make. Mm -hmm. Just remember that they can speak just as good as you can in their first language, but they're also speaking broken, (laughs) you know, English, which good for them because speaking broken Spanish is very difficult to do. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll get to the reviews now because you guys are awesome. And actually, we have one review for you today. And I guess I'll take that one. Because it's a little bit longer. So Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So I will take that one away. Is it The title is, Is It Weird or Normal to Love This Podcast? By Casey Tucker, five stars. It's totally normal. I love this podcast. I started listening toward the end of 2019 and I started from the very beginning and I'm all cut up now. I started listening to get all the BBT because I always love hearing the behind the scenes of how TV shows work or hearing the things I might have missed on the show. But I've grown to love just hearing about your lives in a small town. My favorite segment is Weird or Normal. Can't wait for your more amazing episodes and keep living your best lives, Casey. Thanks, Casey. I need some more Weird or Normal. So um, this week I have um, Rihanna making me like a cool design picture to post. And um, I'm going to be looking for new suggestions because the last suggestions are running low and I'm only so much weird (laughs) and some of them are just too weird to expose i'm saving for a live show because you're just like oh my god like is it weird to sniff the crud between the toes (laughs) but uh but yeah i'm saving like the really weird ones because i don't know uh I want to see people's jaws drop, I guess. Testing the waters there, (laughs) yeah. yeah. It's a little scary. (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, Please rate, review, and subscribe the easiest ways on the Apple Podcasts app on your phone. You can always listen to this anywhere you listen to podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. You can always go to www.cococalientepodcast.com. You can listen there and check out our merchandise. Don't forget to follow us at Coco Caliente Podcast on Twitter. Oh, no, at Coco Caliente Podcast on Instagram and at Coco Caliente Podcast on Twitter. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.